everything that we do, we start with what do our clients want? Uh, and then we execute that subject to what the requirements are. Hi, I'm Jeremy Allaire, and welcome to this episode of The Money Movement. I'm here in Singapore during uh, Singapore FinTech Festival, and I'm very pleased to be joined by the CEO of Standard Chartered, Bill Winters. Great to have you on the podcast. Good to be with you again, Jeremy. Absolutely. So um, a lot of things I'd love to talk to you about, and, and, and maybe just for some basics, um, Standard Chartered obviously is, is this incredible institution that's been around you know, since, I don't know when, 100 years or whatever it is. Um, and the, 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 the bank has been sort of at the core of frontier markets. And um, maybe just frame a little bit in a minute or two, brief history of the bank mm. and kind of you know, where it started, where it is today. Yeah, 170 years ago, it was actually the Standard Bank of Africa and the Charter Bank of India, China, and Australia, which came together in a merger in 1969. But it started off as uh, British colonial, finance the empire, finance trade in the empire banks. Uh, in many cases, the central bank in the, in the uh, local economy. So, so we still print the bank notes in, in Hong Kong, for example. Right. Uh, uh, but uh, Those are like stable coins. It's, it's just <laughs> like another stable coin. Uh, the, uh, when we celebrated our 150th anniversary in, in Hong Kong, we got permission to print a, a 150 Hong Kong dollar banknote. Now, if you can get your hands on one of those, I would like it's worth a lot more than 150 hockey today. The, uh, but the uh, Standard Charter, we have a retail business in Asia, Middle East, and Africa. And we have a cross-border payments business, uh, a cross-border uh, corporate banking business, which is where we work together. And uh, so we're all about connecting. And we're all about connecting people in old-fashioned ways, yeah. but also in some new ways. And I know we're going to be talking today about some of the, the yeah. interesting tech applications to finance. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's fascinating because you know, globalization we think of uh, obviously as as uh, something that happened in the last whatever 30, 40 mm -hmm. years. But you guys were part of globalization. Yes, yeah, been going for a and, long time. And and sort of as a bank, right? You're you you do market infrastructure. And I think it's what's also interesting about Standard Chartered is, you know. You, you've played across these geographies and a huge range of political and economic histories that have kind of run through that. And, and I think about what we do as, as, as building kind of market neutral infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and, and I would imagine that Standard Chartered has to think of itself as sort of this market neutral infrastructure yeah. as well, but also to some degree, Geopolitically neutral, right? Because you're you're working with so many different regions and so many different, or you know, interacting with so many different governments. And yep. how how do you how do you think about being that neutral platform, especially in the current environment? Yeah, uh, we are neutral, but and that, that that is an important place to start. But everything that we do, we start with what do our clients want. Uh, and then we execute that subject to what the requirements are. Yeah. They may be regulatory requirements. They may be sanction-related restrictions. And, of course, we've got all those things in spades yeah. right now. We've got a very big operation in China. We've got a very big operation in Hong Kong. Obviously, here in Singapore, every ASEAN country, every South Asian country, every place in the Middle East, and most of Sub-Saharan Africa. Right? Yeah. But we're also the, the second largest international U.S. dollar clearer right. in the world, which means we've got a big U.S. operation which, amongst many other things, is responsible for imposing and, and uh, maintaining U.S. sanctions, as we do in Europe, or as we do when the Chinese impose sanctions on somebody else. So that's, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're touching all that. Uh, but we start with, what do our customers want and need? Which is, again, how we yeah. end up dealing with you. Yeah. And uh, subject to the restrictions on our activity, we always comply with local law. Yeah. Thankfully, you never have to compromise your neutrality by complying with the law. And right. Of course, we live in fear that one day uh, the laws in one jurisdiction will conflict with the laws in another. But we've you know, there have been some close calls, but we've managed that. And the fact is, all the players, in an, even in an, in an antagonistic world, they want the money to keep on moving. Right. There's this shared, you know, a shared e objective. economic well-being. And like, on the no day one wants to destroy that. Uh, on the day that President Xi is meeting with, with, uh, with President Biden yeah. in San Francisco, yeah. Life is going on despite all this rivalry and, and tension. Right, right. That shared, that shared, uh, that shared 
you know, goal. Absolutely. I, 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 I just, I've always found Standard Charter's position in the world within the banking industry, its history, just fascinating from that perspective. And it, it's a tie-in, obviously, to you know, the development of an internet financial system, mm. right? So the internet heralded this sort of really acceleration in globalization. Yeah. I think if you parallel from you know the early 90s through the mm -hmm. following couple of decades, two, three decades, that, that paralleled this incredible amount of globalization, global trade increase, global commerce increased, and and so on. And and now we're seeing emerge an internet financial system that's you know increasingly built natively up yep. from the ground on, on the internet. And and so it seems like a a bank like Standard Chartered, given that history and given that position, is probably you know best set up in some ways uh, to be a major player in that. Um, uh, you know, regulatory clarity mm -hmm. notwithstanding is sort of emerging and, and so on. And so when, when you think about, you, you've had these emerging market frontiers forever, it's the birth of the company, yeah. but sort of technology frontiers and the building out of this next phase, I hope, of significant global financial integration through the internet. Yep. How do you think about the role of Standard Chartered yeah. in that build out? Yeah, and yeah. You know, at the core, uh, we have institutional and individual customers who want to avail themselves of convenience or safety or security or uh, whatever their particular motivation is for dealing in, in financial markets. They want access to these things. Our job is to provide them with access to those things. So you know, we're not inventing the internet or stable coins or the digital economy. We're contributing to it, but yeah. mostly we're responding to what our, what our existing or new customers mm -hmm find important. Um, we do innovate as well. Uh, we've, we've got a, a ventures lab. We've yeah. had some really great successes in there, actually. Uh, some of it is, is servicing the new economy. We've got a digital asset custodian, Azodia, yep. uh, marketplace and exchange. Uh, you know, th th these are, we're taking, a, 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 we're institutionalizing mm -hmm. uh, you know, parts of the, of, the, of the new economy value chain that were, uh, that, that, that had been a little bit less institutionalized in, obviously, in, and, and collectivized in previous arrangements. Uh, but we're also doing some brand new innovations, which is things that didn't exist before. As much as anything, to keep ourselves sharp and to just understand yeah. uh, how we can we can apply some of the lessons of of, uh, of of new developments and how we can get close to customers who want different things, and then try to expand that back into into the rest of our bank. Uh, but mostly, we're reacting to what our customers want, mm -hmm. and if our customers want to deal in this this fabulously efficient in internet based economy, with uh, with digital money and uh, buying you know, digital assets and services, eventually leading to non digital stuff. But yeah. but but. Uh, if that's what they need, then that's what we're going to do our best to provide. And yeah. we're going to do it alone or we're going to do it with partners. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, obviously, uh, we're, we're excited to work with you in the development of all the market infrastructure that, that's, that's, mm. ne that's needed here. Um, I'm, I'm also interested, you know, given the cross-border nature of, of what you do, I think part of the promise of blockchain networks, stable coins, all this is sort of can you can can you accelerate cross border transactions? Can you uh, provide faster settlement assurance? <clears throat> can you use programmable money and smart contracts to deal with commerce interactions in in new innovative ways? Um, you know, when you think about cross border today, which is obviously central to the business, um, and you think about what it could be mm -hmm. five to ten years from now, which I assume as CEO you got to think out that mm -hmm. far, but you know. Do, do you do you think that the world will feel really dramatically different if this technology builds out? As some hope it will. Do you think it'll feel dramatically different, or uh, or, or how, how do you think about that evolution? Yeah, uh, yeah you're right. Uh, I mean, there's always this interesting quandary where I, I I take it upon myself, and my board has asked me to to look five to ten years out. Yeah, I got to hit the quarterly it's numbers. <laughs> got to hit the quarterly numbers as well. So you know, there's always that tension, but. Uh, uh, I think the legacy of any of any CEO, and of course I intend to, to own stock in this company for years beyond when I'm when I'm no longer working here. But uh, yeah, as we, I, I think we can see some really fundamental changes in the way business and commerce are done. And but when I come back to you know what are we investing in in terms of use cases, mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, there's some really important use cases for us. Fraud, fraud prevention is an enormous use case for mm -hmm. a full range of of these technologies that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, speed of settlement 
is very, very important in some aspects. It doesn't matter for others. I mean, like, honestly, uh, faster payment systems in many markets are just fine mm -hmm. for 98% of individual users, mm -hmm. uh, but may not be fine for an algorithmic trader. Mm -hmm. And uh, reducing settlement risk in the, sit in the system, so, so significantly reducing the risk of securities yeah. or, or tokenized securities, yeah. trading monumentally valuable in terms of, of liberating capital uh, in the system. Uh, obviously, that ties into fraud as well. Uh, the convenience use case is very, very important. I mean, I think you built a whole business on the, on the convenience of, of, of people accessing the digital economy with a digitally native instrument. Uh, so convenience, is, of course, is critically important uh, to us and our customers. Surveillance, which is a double-edged sword. And right. Of course, when I talk about fraud prevention, that's our surveillance, yeah. uh, but other people would also like to surveil transactions yeah. that are going through the system. Uh, that may be an imposed use case. Mm -hmm. Banks are the custodians for the financial crime protection regime. Right, uh, but we're the extensions of law enforcement. We're the ones yeah. to do it, uh, yeah. the front line on the, the fight against financial crime. Uh, so we'll have requirements and, and being able to, to adequately surveil uh, through, let's think defense for a second. How, how are we set up to surveil in a new set of markets? Yeah. Let's think about offense. How can we be better at what we do to serve our stakeholders in the most effective way? Of course, there's some nefarious surveillance applications as well. Yeah. And it, to the extent that, that we think it's inappropriate from a privacy perspective, mm -hmm. we'll avoid it. If we're required to, by law, we require it. So these are the kinds of things we're thinking about. Uh, but we, you know, we can't be a bystander in this. Uh, and I don't even think you can be a fast follower. Uh, I think you've got to be with the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, you at the cutting edge. You don't want to get cut and bleed. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to catch a few falling knives yeah, the, yeah, yeah. and not get the handle. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, in the early stage of these things, you can keep that small. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts also on credit. And I think one of, the, one of the promises of an internet financial system and of more efficient capital market structures where you've, you've got, you know, the, the ability for you know, d different forms of credit to happen you know, through blockchains, through tokenization, other things. Um, given the markets that you serve and you're serving at the retail level, obviously mm -hmm. also, and all these, you know, households, SMEs, obviously large enterprises too, yeah. but sort of at that household SME level across all these regions, mm -hmm. um, you know, is there is there a possibility for significantly improving kind of credit delivery yep. uh, in, in, in all these markets. And it's just, Absolutely. it seems like, I mean, credit is how new economic activity happens. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's something I'm particularly excited about yeah. is sort of just like we have, you know, the internet created these giant marketplaces where everyone can participate, like Alibaba and Amazon or Google AdWords or others. Like, could we see <clears throat> capital markets, like debt capital markets, the, and the, the way in which credit is formed become as efficient and available as other internet markets. And, but you, you got, you're up close to it. Like you see what the challenges are yeah. there today compared to say underwriting in Europe or the United States. It is happening. It's happening at, at pace and it, 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 it is a revolution. Uh, like all revolutions, we have to make sure that, that, that it doesn't have adverse consequences that are either unintended or just by virtue of excess. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have uh, a small business banking units in, 30 countries yeah. around Asia, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, we have uh, obviously large corporate banking as well, but but I mean SMEs uh, typically carried out as an extension of our retail business. So right. historically branch based, uh, which now are almost entirely algorithmic. So mm. you, you account opening algorithmic, credit scoring algorithmic, loan extension, mm -hmm. loan monitoring, loan collections, mm -hmm. uh, automated. Uh, and we're doing that our own, on our own, and we're doing that with partners. Mm -hmm. So we have probably have 15 partnerships. An interesting one is with WeBank in China, mm -hmm. where we're, we're banking their SME ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, we're relying, we are relying substantially on their proprietary data. Yeah, right, uh, which is incredible data. It's yeah. incredible data. It's very differentiated. We, we also have a very interesting uh, partnership on the retail side with Ant Financial. Yeah. Extraordinary access to data through their payment platform, right? right? And through the Alibaba e-commerce platform. So... Yeah, that, 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 that redefines the assessment of credit when you've got that kind of a partner. We set up a, a, a different kind of partnership in Indonesia with Bukalapak, so one of the largest e-commerce platforms, where we've in, we have a banking as a service module that we've installed inside the, the, the Buka e-commerce website. 
credit decisioning is effectively a joint process where we're, we're getting the value of, 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 the, of the BUCA data together with, with obviously the, the credit bureaus, our own assessment of credit mm -hmm. based on our own history. Uh, we will be able to make much better credit decisions, mm -hmm. much faster, much more conveniently, yeah. almost certainly with much lower credit losses, which mm -hmm. will translate through because it's a competitive market yeah. to a lower cost of, of credit for consumers, yeah. which should create jobs. It should spur consumer exactly. spending. It should be good for society. Now, we all know that any good thing taken to excess becomes a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have to watch that. Uh, and if we do something right, there will be other people that will follow. Uh, they may decide to just cut a couple of corners, mm -hmm. overextend credit, underprice, generating losses or uh, so it, like every great innovation in history you know, we, we tend to go through excess mm -hmm. and then pull back we're quite aware of that having been through a lot of this in our 170 years uh, but it's this is a transformation in terms yeah. of the way the credit is assessed and delivered yeah that's tr that's tremendous and you know there's sort of <clears throat> I'm interested as well is is uh, the sort of securitization of credit and how that then gets you know, distributed out into the markets, but tokenization, obviously big buzzword, everyone's talking about tokenization. And I think the idea that you could have uh, kind of credit pools that are going, using data that are, you know, kind of going into these kinds of markets, but where you could actually tokenize that pool of credit, that then becomes an investable opportunity for people in completely other parts of the world. And so maybe instead of relying upon the local deposit base, you're actually able to rely upon kind of capital flows where it's just in the past, it was impossible to invest into, you know, these growth businesses in Indonesia or whatever the, yeah. the, the market is and sort of be interested in your thoughts on tokenization, opening up of capital markets. What could that do when you think about it aligned with the sort of, you know, how, how does one invest in emerging market growth? Yeah. You know, it, it, again, highly topical. Uh, one month ago, right here in Singapore, uh, we did our first pilot transaction to effectively securitize, tokenize a portfolio of trade receivables. Right. So Perfect. trade trade finance tends to be very short dated loans, you know, mm -hmm. 30 days, 60 days while, while goods are, are in shipment. Yeah. Uh, it's tends not to be risky at all from a credit perspective because right. the last thing you don't pay is your you gotta supply. You've got to believe the invoice. <laughs> and the bill of lading and, yeah. the, oh. and the insurance contract. And, 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 and so it's highly susceptible to fraud. Yeah. So uh, the use of blockchain technology to, to, right. to have a, 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 true, a true source yeah. is already uh, not fully embedded in trade finance, but it is becoming embedded. Yeah. Uh, and then the ability to, to take these assets, which were very hard right. for a capital markets investor to, never to do, take on right? board, because you can't do hundreds of transactions with a 30 day yeah, exactly. continue, with, with all the fraud prevention, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, it, so we, 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 we took a portfolio, yeah. it will be a rotating portfolio, tokenized, and so it works. I love it. Okay? The technology works. It's yeah. a pilot. Right? Yeah. I mean, this is not this industrial. Is like, these, are, these are green shoots, whatever you want to call them, right? Was, but they're, they're it, really it's powerful. More than, so we had seven investors. Yeah that bought these tokens at yeah. the end of the day. We're creating a, a, a secondary market in mm -hmm. these tokens. It, it wasn't that hard, yeah. right? It wasn't that hard. The next one will be you know, yeah. one-tenth as hard, and the next yeah. will be one-tenth after that. Yeah. And then we'll get thousands of investors, yeah. and we'll have a whole new asset class. Like when you know, the first e-commerce websites were getting set up, yeah. it was like it worked and it traced through and you could do this. And then when you got like scalable platforms of many to many, you know, anywhere in the world, yep. it was like, Revolutionary. Yeah. So I, I, my my dream is to see you know internet capital markets. Yes. You know that that have that same capacity in it, and it, it could it could change the role of banks and non banks and all of this as well. But I think you know as a as a 170 year old mm. franchise that's been uh, you know in in the frontier of both you know reach distribution, but now in technology, you guys seem like you're very well set up for that kind of transformation. Yeah, life is very constraining if you think that you're confined to things that are traditional banking. Yeah. But uh, we go into very few, few things uh, where we're applying whatever innovation capabilities or te technology capabilities we've got that don't have their roots in some understanding we have mm -hmm. of banking mm -hmm. or the, right. way, the way customers think about banking. Because customers, as you know, they don't want a, 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 a fancy wingding. They just want to execute what they were doing yesterday right. better tomorrow. Yeah. And that may allow them to do new things with their business, to develop their new business models and require new customers. 
Uh, so the, the interactive nature, the way we work with you, with the way we work yeah. with our tech partners, we probably have 300 fintech partners mm -hmm. that we deal with. They're not competition. Yeah. They're either providing us a service yeah. or we're partnering with them. Uh, but the, the objective is to make life easier for the end user. Mm -hmm. If we do that, we'll make money. Yeah. And if we don't, we won't, we won't make money. It's a good philosophy. Well, it's uh, tremendous to work with you in, in building out this next wave of infrastructure. And uh, I, I hope to someday also be a 170-year-old company uh, with, with global, uh, global scale. But uh, really a pleasure, Bill. Thank you. We'll, 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 we'll do all we can to get you there. <laughs> together, together. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Absolutely.